Hey, yeah, Cryptosans. Tonight's show, Bellatrix Signals Ethereum's Merge. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is September 6th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I'll be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together, we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space in the industry that surrounds it. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. The Bellatrix hard fork, the last upgrade before the merge happens, it was activated on Tuesday. This marks the beginning of the end of a very long process, that of changing Ethereum from a proof of work to a proof of stake blockchain. This upgrade prepares the proof of stake beacon chain, and this beacon chain will become Ethereum's consensus layer and will be merged with Ethereum's mainnet execution layer. Which, now we have some updated information as far as when that's going to happen. And it comes to us from no less than Vitalik Buterin himself. He tweeted out an update to the expected merge date. He told his 4.2 million followers, quote, The merge is still expected to happen around September 13th to the 15th. What's happening today is the Bellatrix hard fork, which prepares the chain for the merge. Still important though, make sure to update your clients. So as we said, the Bellatrix hard fork was activated today. It occurred around 1135 UTC. And keep this in mind, they don't have a firm idea when any of these things are going to happen exactly. It's not like Vitalik is saying, hey, Alexa, pause the Ethereum blockchain at 1157 p.m. No, what they do is they pick a total terminal difficulty or a TTD. This is a number that represents all of the cumulative difficulty of all of the Ethereum ever mined anywhere. So the best they can do is offer up a guess as approximately when that TTD will be reached. Now before, the best information that we had said it was somewhere between the 13th and the 16th. Well, that range has tightened up a bit. According to the latest data on the website bordel.wtf, they're predicting between 315 UTC on the 14th and 10.50 UTC on Thursday, the 15th. Now, when that TTD is reached, the merge of the consensus and execution layers will happen. The belief is that this means that the chain can continue working along the new proof-of-stake consensus for issuing and authenticating blocks. That's the whole point of this. So that means that the next block produced would come from a beacon chain validator. And that is the final step of the transformation of Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake. One thing to keep in mind, and you've heard me say this before, the merge will not directly affect transaction fees. It doesn't make transactions any faster. It doesn't make transactions any cheaper. That's a completely different upcoming upgrade called the surge, which is a ways off in the future. Last I heard, the surge was expected to happen sometime in 2023. But the merge has had some unanticipated delays, so I wouldn't be surprised to find that they move that date back a bit. So if the merge isn't going to bring down transaction fees or make transactions go through faster, why bother? It's believed that after the merge, we'll see better security. The network will be more decentralized and the proof of validators will be broader. Not everybody is on board with that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Also, the cost to get in on being a validator is much lower than it was with mining. Well, one thing that we should be happy about, it will use less energy. That means it costs less to run the Ethereum network. That's less in terms of money, but that's also less in terms of energy usage. It will drop consumption by 99%. That said, moving to a proof of stake is needed to go to the next stop, that of sharding. That's where that big boost in scalability and speed is going to come in. So the surge is when sharding gets rolled out. That's when they plan on splitting the Ethereum's infrastructure into smaller pieces. The goal is to improve scaling that way. But a lot of people think the merge is going to bring down gas fees, and it won't. It doesn't change the rate at which transactions process, and it doesn't make transactions go through the system any faster. Well, we lost the trillion mark. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $952 billion. 
That's down 3.03%. Dramatic losses even Ethereum couldn't dodge. And we'll talk about that tonight. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 4.34%, Ethereum down 1.29%, Tether, USDC, and Binance Coin down 3.85%. So before the Bellatrix upgrade even launched, it was enough to see a bump to Ethereum's price, a bump that has since disappeared. Big surprise. Kind of a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing. Because in the run-up to Bellatrix being activated, Ethereum surged like 7% in 24 hours. As far as readiness goes, data from Ether nodes showed that 72.9% of nodes were marked as ready for the merge, which leaves something like 27.1% lagging in a not ready state. In order to be considered ready, operators need to have updated their consensus layer clients before Bellatrix launched. Now, if you're a node operator and you haven't updated, the Ethereum Foundation will tell you that you might be in for a bad time, unless you wanted to be stuck on the pre-fork blockchain. They said, quote, node operators will be stuck on an incompatible chain following the old rules and will be unable to send Ether or operate on the post-merge Ethereum network. And pay attention to this part. The word comes from the Ethereum Foundation, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Ethereum users don't need to do anything to get ready for the merge. Your Ethereum is safe. Your Ethereum NFTs are safe. All your Ethereum-based tokens are going to be just fine. ERC-20, just fine. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't need to log in. You don't need to connect your wallet. You don't have to do anything to be ready for the merge. Anyone that tells you anything different is trying to scam you. Now, what are the downsides to the merge? Some people are concerned that the merge will make the network less decentralized. There are a few very large staking pools involved here. A lot of people have staked with places like Coinbase, delegating their vote in exchange for collecting interest. So all the people staking their Ethereum on Coinbase or any other of the staking pools all contribute indirectly to the second potential problem. OFAC. OFAC is the Office of Foreign Assets Control. They're a part of the United States Department of Treasury. OFAC manages the list of specially designated nationals. That is a very bad list if you're an American or if you want to do business with America. It establishes rather steep penalties for doing business with people or businesses that the U.S. government has sanctioned. Now think about Tornado Cash. Some entities got ahead of themselves. They started banning addresses that were even passively involved with Tornado Cash. If your wallet connected with the wallet of a sanctioned entity, you might find yourself effectively sanctioned. People who received even a tiny amount of Ethereum from Tornado Cash through an anonymous person they found themselves banned from protocols like Aave. Also, Circle froze 75,000 USDC on Tornado Cash, meaning that the owner of any of that USDC couldn't move their funds. Now, there's no evidence that any of this was instigated by a member of the U.S. government. The Treasury Department didn't call up Circle and say, hey, freeze that cash. They just chose to do it on their own. So the concern is, what will happen if... After the merge is in place, and after all the staking is in place, they're worried that the governments will start imposing regulation on the big entities staking Ethereum. So what happens if Coinbase, for example, starts getting pressure to censor transactions because they belong to someone who's sanctioned? Well, then Coinbase finds themselves faced with either doing what the government wants and then getting their stake slashed because they're committing acts in bad faith, or not doing what the government wants and facing whatever those consequences are, when you gather all of the control and all of the voting power in fewer clusters by establishing staking pools, that is one of the potential hazards. The global NFT market cap is up 12.92%. Sales volume is up 5.6% in 24 hours. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are 
CryptoPunks, followed by Todd James Art Party, Women Ape Yacht Club, Genuine and Dead, and Other Deed. Now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. And another potential downside to the merge comes from displaced miners. These guys spend a lot of time and money getting their rigs and their facilities set up. And now, they can no longer use their expensive equipment to get Ethereum rewards. There have been some threats to start a proof-of-work version of the Ethereum network. Now, I get these folks. However, I'm not sure that setting up a proof-of-work version of Ethereum is the way to go. If I were the kind of guy to hand out financial advice, I would tell those miners to start mining Ethereum Classic. And there's been a lot of talk lately of exactly that kind of thing. Andy Long is CEO of White Rock. He believes the merge will force miners off to look for greener pastures, that they may swamp, his word, other coins. That would be bad for existing miners on those chains. There'd be an increase in mining difficulty and a dilution of profits as the mining pool gets bigger. He said, quote, as GPU miners point their hardware at other chains, their difficulty will increase, causing lower returns and splitting the reward amongst more miners. Potentially unpopular opinion, but I think the merge might actually be a good thing in terms of fostering some goodwill with gamers. Here's why I say that. Gamers need graphic cards to play games, at least the good games. And the best games often require the best cards. Pre-cryptocurrency days, the best cards were kind of expensive, but I could always manage to reasonably afford the top tier or two of video cards. However, once someone figured out how to use graphics processors to mine crypto, that was it. Demand went up, and then that demand, it was backed by a lot of cash eager to invest in crypto mining rigs. Now, that Ethereum isn't going to be mined anymore. The demand for those cards should come down. In fact, GPU prices have already started falling due to a crushing crypto winner. People are already trying to dump their rigs on the market for inflated prices. The price of an RTX 3090 graphics card has dropped from a high of over $3,500, which is just insane, down to under 2 k today, also just insane. It's still crazy high, but it's getting better. Once all that settles out, maybe the price of a good graphics card will start to ease down. That said, there are a number of other cryptocurrencies that are still on a proof-of-work path. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Monero, Zcash, and the already mentioned Ethereum Classic. Hive Blockchain is a Canadian crypto mining company, and they have been working to replace Ethereum with other coins in advance of the merge. Hive's Sweden-based Boden facility is one of the largest Ethereum mining operations in the world. So, According to a production update put out today, their tech division is beta testing various GP mineable coins this week. Ethereum mining for them is going to be a tough thing to replace. Hive said their Ethereum mines have historically produced three to four times the revenue of their Bitcoin mining. That said, they're selling their mined Ethereum to fund an expansion of their Bitcoin program by adding a new generation of circuits specifically designed to mine Bitcoin. Now, the merge has already happened in three different test nets, Robston, Cepla, and Gurley. In all three cases, there were minor issues. So, we're waiting on Paris. Paris is the upgrade that launches the merge. As we speak, though, the price of Ethereum is depressed. There was a pretty good run-up of price before the Bellatrix upgrade went live. It was kind of a fake-out, uh, buy the rumor, sell the story. Because mid-morning my time, Ethereum lost around 100 bucks per unit, like almost instantly, following from 1680 to around 1580 at the time of writing. Ethereum is holding a market dominance of around 20.3%, whereas Bitcoin is at 38.1. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. Take care of yourselves, but... Take care of each other too. We'll see you tomorrow night.